Now I study obesity. I would like to study whether obesity is a family problem or an individual problem. And here's how I've proposed to do it. I have collected a sample of 22 pairs of women, 22 mothers and their adult daughters. So I've got 22 mothers and 22 daughters, one daughter for each mother. For each one, I've recorded the BMI of the mother and the daughter, and I put it on a line. So this mother and this daughter go together. I would like to ask the question, is there a relationship, is there a linear relationship between the BMI of the mother and the BMI of her daughter <coughs> for this sample and therefore for the population as a whole? So I'm really looking at a correlation study. Correlation is when we're testing for a linear relationship. So let's work at a confidence level. Should we work at 95% confidence? Sure. And for correlation, our null and our alternative are always the same. Our null hypothesis is that the correlation coefficient is equal to 0, which means there's no correlation. And our alternative hypothesis is that the correlation coefficient is not equal to 0, which means there is correlation. Okay? Excellent. So now, Let's take a look. We are going to go through the five steps for determining if there's a correlation. And if there is, we'll continue on to the sixth step to do regression. But we don't do regression at all unless we already know there's a correlation. OK, so step one, is this paired quantitative data? Well, it's certainly quantitative data. These are all numbers. And it is paired. Each line is one mother with that mother's daughter. So there's a natural relationship between the two samples. Excellent. This is paired quantitative data. Step two. Step two asks us, is this a simple random sample or the whole population? In this case, this is a simple random sample. I've done my sampling well. So step three says to make a scatter plot, just to see visually if this looks like it could possibly be linear. So we are going to go to graph, scatter plot. I'm just doing a simple scatter plot. Wonderful. And then I have to know which one is which. So I'm really wondering, it, it would make more sense to say that the daughter's BMI might depend on the mother's BMI. So the daughter is going to be my Y variable, my dependent variable. The mother's going to be my X variable. And I'm going to say, OK. And it's going to make a graph for me. There's my scatter plot. Now, I want to look at this and say, is it possible that there's a trend, an upward or a downward trend, some relationship between the two? And the answer is, I don't know. It looks pretty good for most part, but there's a couple of these points down here that don't seem to follow a trend at all. So this is one where it might be questionable. I would say if I could get rid of these two points that are kind of look like they might be outliers, then I would say, yeah, there's a pretty good upward trend. So I think I'm going to go on to step four. If it looked terrible, if it was just all over the place, I wouldn't. But here, I think if it weren't for these two pieces, then it wouldn't be so bad at all. So I'm going to go on to step four, which says to remove outliers if you know they are errors. I would love to remove these two outliers, but I don't know that they're errors, and that's bad ethics in science. You can't just remove outliers because they don't give you the results that you want. You can only remove them if you know you made some sort of error in taking the measurement or in surveying the people or in whatever it was you were doing. All right, so now let's go to do our correlation. Step five is to actually calculate the correlation coefficient and its p-value. So I'm going to go to stat, basic statistics, and I'm going to come down here to correlation. All right. Now, for correlation, it wants to know what variables are we going to use. We're going to use the mother's BMI and the daughter's BMI. It doesn't matter which order you put them in for correlation. By the way, there's more than one method. We're just going to use Pearson correlation. That's the one that the book uses. And we're going to say, OK. And Minitab calculates the Pearson correlation coefficient. That doesn't tell me much, but the p-value, oh, that's very important. The p-value is 0 0.001. I was working at 95% confidence, or a significance of 0.05. This p-value is much smaller. The p is low. The null must go. So I can reject the null, and I can accept the alternative. The alternative was that there is a correlation. So there is sufficient evidence you could say at 95% confidence if you wanted to, that there exists a linear relationship between the BMI of a mother and the BMI of her daughter. 
Excellent! There is a correlation, or at least there is evidence of a correlation. That means I could go on and I could do regression. Now regression is finding a line. If there's a linear relationship, then there must be a line that best describes that data and that I could use to predict what a daughter's BMI would be if I knew what her mother's BMI was. So I want to find that line. Oh, I've got some crazy things going on on my screen here. I'm going to find that line with a graph. I'm going to go to Graph, Scatter Plot, and this time I'm going to do my scatter plot with regression. Okay. Now, keep in mind, the first time I made a scatter plot, I couldn't do this. I'm only going to do this once I already know that there's a correlation. So I'm going to say OK. Again, I want to think about what my y variable and x variable are, and they're the same as they were last time. My y variable, the daughter, might in some way depend on the mother. And I'm going to say OK. And it gives me the same graph it gave me before, but now it includes a line in the middle. That line is called the regression line. That line is the line that best fits all of this data. But if I wanted to make a prediction, I'd need to know the equation of the line. I hope you remember from algebra that any line has an equation. I'm going to find it out by taking my mouse and just putting it on the line and leaving it there for a second. Come on. There we go. I didn't get it quite right the first time, but now I've got it on there. And you can see the line. The daughter's BMI equals 1.278 plus 1.007 times the mother's BMI. That is the equation of the line with those two variables. By the way, that R squared, that 46.1%, that tells you that this linear relationship explains 46.1% of the variation in the data that's going on. So that does mean that, it, that there is still more than half of the variation that is not explained by a linear relationship. But it's not a bad approximation, and it gives me some way to predict a daughter's BMI based on her mother's.